I guess it's not morning where most of you are. Uh, my name is Dan Rosnova. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a PM on the Service Bus team. And I'm here today to talk about Azure Service Bus Premium Messaging, uh, which is our newest service that we released last week or something 10 days ago. Um, so really what I want to talk about today is sort of what premium messaging is and what it's for, a little bit of how, to, how it works, and um, also a little bit of when to use it, and I guess more importantly, when not to. So let's start with those. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm going to open up a soft drink here. Uh, so what is Service Bus, right? It's messaging in the cloud, enterprise messaging in the cloud. Um, messaging is a topic that kind of comes up every other decade. Um, it's been going strong, I guess, on and off every other decade since the 70s. Uh, this happens to be an odd decade number, so it seems to be popular again. Uh, lucky for me. Um, when we look at what uh, messaging is, you know, what broker messaging is, it's really about loose coupling, about interoperability, about elasticity and scale and federation. And it's really about uh, being able to, to show uh, or to, to communicate between systems uh, in, in real time, in, in reliable ways, um, in ways that you, uh, you know, can, can build sort of robust systems on. So these are kind of the, the, the concepts behind this. And make no mistake, messaging is the pattern on which the cloud was built. So uh, this is really, I mean, this is how how the internet works. This is how all of it works. I, I actually just was recently rereading uh, uh, one of the classic uh, Booch books about uh, object-oriented software design from, I think, 94, so 21 years old. And the entire book talks about uh, clients and servers, even though it's dealing with, a, you know, a, object-oriented programming, not network programming. And so the concepts have been with us for a long time, um, and they're used widely, even yeah. when, when, you know, single process. Yeah, I'm sorry to discuss. I think there is a bit of a background noise coming, um, because you are the only one speaking. Uh, so we have to like a bad situation. Is that, um, let's see. Let me see if I can change this. Uh, this audio up a little bit. I'm getting some background noise too. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, Dan, it's much better, yeah. Okay, excellent, good. Sorry about that. All right, so messaging, why messaging, right? Uh, why not just call directly uh, to from system to system? This is the first question that you know all of us on this call probably have to deal with all the time, um, being in the integration space people just looking to call directly to each other. Um, it's simple enough when you think about it. Uh, why not just draw the analogy that, you know, doing a direct service call is kind of like using a mobile phone. And um, to some extent, it sort of is, but it's not like today's mobile phones or today's phones at all. Um, it's more like, you know, how mobile phones used to be. And in fact, when you look at uh, direct system to system integration, um, it's actually not even mobile. So you're going back a little further. Um, and then when you think about what does direct communication mean, not only does it mean that you need to know where participants are and have them available at the same time, um, but you're actually not getting the features you would think of for, for phones like voicemail 
or even like call waiting. So you're going back even further. So when you try and draw an analogy between doing direct system-to-system -system integration rather than doing a messaging-based integration, you're really kind of winding the clock back pretty far here. You're, uh, you're actually you know, kind of in this space, um, not, not in the sophisticated you know, smartphone space that you might think of when you, when you make up this analogy in your head. Um, and so when you really think about how, how direct communication works, I mean, it's complicated, right? Especially when you're looking at how it used to work. Uh, which is basically what you know a direct web service call or something is still going to be or a direct rest call. Um, you're going to have directory issues, you're going to have exploration issues, you're going to need some sort of operator to figure out what's going on. Um, whereas a, a, as the, a different analogy for, for messaging would be something like a, del a delivery service or a postal service. Um, they may not get a lot of attention these days, but uh, it's still an amazing service. You know you can you can drop an envelope in in pretty much any country. And it'll be somewhere else uh, very quickly, depending on how much you pay. Um, you can get it signed for. You get all of these sort of traits that you that you get with messaging uh, are very similar analogies to what you get with something like an express delivery service. So you can get retries. You get all these things. And individually, the, the idea of just making a direct call at first sounds very simple. But as you start adding the pieces up, you end up having to do more and more and more work uh, in order to make those direct calls work. So really, that's what messaging is about. That is why it, it remains popular. Uh, that's why it's the industry it is today, uh, is because it is uh, much better suited to machine-to-machine -machine communication uh, than something like you know the, the analogy of doing a direct call. So uh, really, that's kind of the, the why messaging. Um, I don't think I need to sell this group on messaging, but you know it's good to keep that in mind because it's very easy to get lost. That you know, everything's connected, everything's restful. Uh, you can just call directly between a bunch of things, and it's the same sort of brittle uh, integration pattern that we've seen people use for a very long time to build tightly coupled uh, brittle systems. So let's pretend that that wasn't the case. Let's pretend that just calling a service directly or not using messaging for your systems uh, you know, was, was as easy and as sophisticated and, and convenient as a modern smartphone. Uh, what you would still get, though, is that you need to pick up that phone and make that call. So it kind of looks like this, but in reality, uh, what you're getting into is something a lot more, more busy, you know, something that's a lot more work than you at first realized. Um, and that gets back to that whole idea of scale. And uh, all scalable systems are asynchronous by nature. Um, something like a direct call, and actually HTTP itself is not an asynchronous protocol. And to well, we'll change that or help that but it is a strict request response protocol. So when you're looking at doing REST, or even when you're looking at doing service bus with REST, or a messaging platform with REST, it's really not the right protocol to be doing messaging, which is why we've taken such an investment in AMQP, because that is a messaging protocol. So you know, when you put that behind you, you kind of come to this realization that, OK, it sounds easy. We'll just make this call. We'll just integrate these things directly. Um, and then, you know, by the time you've realized that you've already invested so much fixing one thing after another after another uh, that you start to, you know, you're pretty heavily invested and it's harder to change direction at that point. So the idea behind messaging is to avoid that distraction in the first place and uh, make sure that you don't go down a path that you're going to regret at some point in the future. Um, the ultimate, you know, thing behind that is that you think you're getting this. You know, you think you're getting something really sophisticated and powerful. And actually, this looks really funny on my screen because I have the blue keyboard for my Surface. So it, it looks exactly like, like a, a screen within a screen. Um, in reality, though, you're not getting this. When you try and wire stuff together without a messaging platform, and, and I don't care what messaging platform that is. It could be BizTalk. It could be MQ. It could be Rabbit. It could be anything. Uh, when you're making direct calls, what you're really getting is this. Um, and this, this is awesome. This is my typewriter, actually. I took this photo this morning. Um, <clears throat> it's a great typewriter. And if you look close, you can see it actually has touch control. Um, so does my service. But you know they're different things, and they, they mean different things. So you kind of got to be careful what you're getting into uh, when you're doing integration at all and sort of what you know, your risk tolerance is. Don't get me wrong. This is a great typewriter. I still use it sometimes. You can actually see the, the red ribbon that's in, in it right now. So you don't want to be this guy, right? You don't want to be sitting there being like, hey, I thought this 
it's all going to work fine, and we've invested all this time and money, um, and it's not. Um, although, I, so this is from the Microsoft Images Gallery. I have to use only images that I get from there or that I take myself, so, you know, to avoid royalties. Um, I wouldn't want to work for this guy either at this point. He doesn't look very happy. I'm not sure why he's in our, our media gallery. Um, so what is messaging for, right? Uh, messaging is for all of these things. Uh, if you want to see more about my take on messaging, I gave a talk at Ignite New Zealand that outlines almost all of these. Uh, but these are kind of the features that, that we really stress in our messaging platform uh, that are uh, that are really powerful. You'll, you'll notice one I didn't put on here is actually express entities, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, so these are the things that you're gonna you're gonna do with uh, with messaging, right? So all the stuff that you're probably already doing anyway. Um, and these are the features that we have to enable those. And this is the list I didn't put uh, uh, express entities on because <laughs> they're not premium. Uh, but things like schedule delivery, forwarding, defer, sessions, batching, uh, all of these things, all of these features cost different amounts of compute and memory and storage. So really it's resource utilization that these things are going to take up. All these features are available in our standard platform. Um, and really, you know, Service Bus is the most sophisticated messaging platform in the cloud. Uh, you can look at anything out there from Amazon or from Google, and they have very interesting offerings, yes, but they're not, uh, they're not with the same traditional enterprise messaging focus that Service Bus is. And, um, you know, part of that feature set is, is cost, is cost and runtime. Um, so when you look at sort of the high-level architecture of how Service Bus works, we have this concept of front ends and back ends and storage. And so your message goes and sails through, you know, a front end, which is stateless. Uh, when you send your message to Service Bus, you're opening a connection, a socket connection, to one of those front ends. Uh, that connection is held open. That front end goes and talks to a, a stateful back end, which is where your queue or topic or whatever lives. Um, and that, uh, that stateful back end is actually coordinating all the things to storage. So transactions, um, you know, any, any sort of updates or, or pieces like that. And so once your message is actually written into storage, which for our standard platform is, uh, is SQL, we actually then unroll this chain. So storage is done. The back end says, yes, I'm done. It's still connected to the front end, which is connected to your client. And that whole handshake back, you know, we, we close at each point, And now you get an ACK back, and your message is done, and it's stored, and it's safe. Uh, the cool thing that we're getting here is we're getting a lot of availability. Uh, our front ends are stateless. So if one is not available for any reason, you'll get bounced through another, and it's no big deal. You'll, you'll notice that anything in service bus is all uh, a namespace is a DNS entry. So it's all below a DNS. Um, so this is pretty easy. The back ends, they are stateful, but we've got a whole lot of them, and we can shift the load around very quickly. Um, they're, they're on a service fabric ring, so they're highly available already. Um, and the same with our storage layer. It's actually the SQL premium that we use uh, does a lot of uh, uh, sophisticated replication for us. We're, we're saving the data in multiple databases. Uh, you know, it's, it's backed up for us in real time. So this is pretty cool, this is awesome, and really the features from the previous slide are what make these demands on primarily the back ends and the uh, storage as well. So if you're doing something like sessions and you have a bunch of messages in the same session, you're saving session state, which is one of the best features of session, is having a stateful uh, you know, property bag or memory area you can persist things into. Um, that is actually going to make a resource uh, demand on our back end and on our storage. So that is, you know, the cost of these things, of these features that are very sophisticated and awesome, uh, but they are, you know, expensive uh, to use sometimes. Unfortunately, what this really looks like then, um, which this is from my Ignite uh, talk, is, is it really looks like this. Uh, what you're getting is that our runtime, we're trying to fill up pieces of workload on th those machines uh, that, that don't all fit together perfectly. Um, and in reality, you know, this is my favorite way to view it. It's, it's totally kind of a little bit of Tetris. So um, that's fine. It works great. Anyone using Service Bus right now will see that, you know, for the vast majority of cases, it's working great for them. Um, but, you know, there is a, a, a point at which this can become problematic. Um, and that point is uh, 
what we kind of come sometimes to call a noisy neighbor. Uh, how this expresses itself if too many people demand too much um, from our service is through message latency. This is the first thing you'll notice. Um, and this is actually a pretty realistic graph um, of, it's not an exact one, but um, of what latency will look like in our service. And that is that the majority of our, uh, our latency is very low um, and our service is usually running very well. Uh, but at times we get, you can see a very long tail on this chart that's going up to some pretty high numbers. And they'll even go past that sometimes. Um, so this is kind of a, a little bit of a problem. Um, the, the other thing that you will get, we're doing this because we're slowing down our, our demand from our clients so that we don't have anything go wrong. So we have transactional consistency, so we have availability, we don't just drop stuff. At some point we get the server, server busy exception, you know, uh, and it will just be like, hey, tough, you know, another image I stole from our gallery here. Um, we're just going to drop your traffic, you know, we're going to throw back to you server busy. Um, the unfortunate thing is that a lot of customers seem to think that this is the time to really send more and more and more and retry faster. Um, that's not actually the case. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not a good idea to be like, hey, you're really busy. I'm going to send you the same message six times now because you're busy. Um, so that is one of the, you know, aspects of, of what server busy means when you get it is we're trying to tell you, hey, don't do that. I really wanted to show this uh, with some pictures of a sumo wrestlers in a hot tub, um, but I could not get a copyright free uh, image of that, so I'll have to take one next time I'm in Japan. Because um, it's really like that, right? You're in this pool of resources, everything's going fine, and then the big sumo guy shows up and wants to get in the hot tub with you, and you know all the water's going to fly out. So uh, you're not going to have as pleasant of an experience probably at, after that point. Uh, and that's exactly how our service is. Uh, that is actually an issue that, that was pressing for a small, small percentage of our customers, primarily our, our internal customers, and some of our big external ones, a few of which I think are actually on this call. So um, what we did then was we, we looked at where are we having contention, um, and there are two places where we had contention. One is on our storage layer, which in our, in our standard service is SQL. It's, that's no longer the case in our premium service. So the first thing we did was address that. And uh, we addressed that by using a, a, an engine that you'll sometimes hear some of the people on the team uh, refer to as Jetstream. And that is the storage technology underneath Event Hubs. So Event Hubs has been a very successful service and it's two years out. We're over a trillion and a half messages a month right now. Um, and that engine has proven itself over its lifetime now for us to, to be confident enough in it to use it for messaging, which tends to be a very demanding workload um, with more features than something like Event Hubs has. Um, and that sort of frees up one of our performance issues that we had in the past. Uh, additionally, we actually changed our approach a little bit. And instead of uh, having a shared pool of this Jetstream storage, each premium uh, messaging namespace gets its own. So there's no contention between workloads for the storage layer anymore. And then what we've also done is, uh, sorry, is uh, carve out pieces of these backends so that each premium namespace gets some of these specific uh, server resources as well. So that's going to be things like compute and memory and, and then you know with storage with the IOPS. So you're actually getting a full reservation of actual pieces here uh, that there's not going to be any noisy neighbor on. There's not going to be any uh, contention on. So the availability of those resources is going to be completely driven by your own workload. Now, this isn't to say that you're not going to get things like server busy exceptions anymore. Um, but if you do, it's going to be because of your workload is filling up the bucket of resources that you have purchased. Um, that's actually a good indication then at that point that you should probably purchase more resources. Um, and that we make that quite easy in our in our model. So with premium messaging, uh, the, the namespace is what's considered premium or what's created as premium. Uh, so you select that when you're when you're creating the namespace. There is no upgrading from standard to premium. It's really because these are different things. They're not running in the same hardware anymore. Um, premium is really carved out. Um, and what you're doing when you create a namespace is you're picking a number of messaging units. And these are the dedicated resource sets. Um, they come in one, two, or 
four message units. We could potentially do more if we're asked to. Um, and we get a couple of things out of this. One is that we get uh, very simple pricing out of this. Uh, there's no more per operation pricing. Uh, when you look in the messaging space in the cloud today, there are really two models for how to how to charge for messaging. Uh, one is sort of a per operation or a la carte um, uh, model, which we, which is what standard is, um, and one is a a uh, a fixed fee model, which is what premium is. Uh, the fixed fee model is used by companies like PubNub, who actually switched to that recently, and, and a few uh, smaller companies who offer RabbitMQ clusters uh, dedicated uh, for their customers that they run on your behalf. Uh, so this is much more like that, uh, except it's, it's really the same platform from a function and feature standpoint. The same code, uh, for now at least, is running for both our standard and premium, but the runtime that we run them on is, is different. Uh, so this is kind of cool. These resource sets are very predictable. Uh, you can see how hot you're running your messaging unit or your, your namespace uh, based on what you've purchased for it. And then the most important thing is that this is going to give you repeatable, predictable performance. Uh, you don't have to share the hot tub with the Sumo guys anymore. You have your own hot tub. Um, so you're not going to get you know, unexpected latency. You're not going to get uh, unexpected uh, server busy errors, you know, a, a workload that's working fine, you know, at your at your purchased capacity rate will always be working fine at that purchase capacity rate. Now, if you grow your needs, you change what you're doing, it is going to impact, you know, sort of what you're getting out of our service. So it's not like a magic bullet here, and it's not auto scale either. Uh, this is a fairly, you know, you can see at 22, 26 a day. Uh, we're in preview now, so it's half that. Um, it's a fairly expensive service. So we are not going to, you know, bump up and start charging you more without really getting explicit approval for that. Um, so you really want to pick kind of what you need. You want to look at your usage, which is available both through API and through the portal, uh, and see if you're, you know, getting server busy or see how much capacity you're getting and, and what you really need. So how you get started is pretty easy. We are in the, uh, in the new portal in the preview portal, but we're behind a preview key right now, so you need to know the magic URL to use. Um, but in our current portal, our vCurrent portal, you can just go right in there and uh, and see, you know, service bus right now, um, just like it's always been. And now when you create a namespace, uh, just like you always have in the portal, you'll get a new feature. Uh, where is that? There you go. Um, and that's going to be uh, if you want it to be a premium namespace. Uh, admittedly, this page is getting a little bit busy now um, because we've got, you know, our, our friends from Notification Hub on here with us, um, and then each of us have different tiers and whatever. So as you click on messaging, which is the default type of namespace, uh, you're going to see that you have basic, standard, and premium tiers, and you pick your region. And when you're on premium, you will also be able to pick your messaging units. It's a pretty straightforward model. We're trying to make this as simple as possible. Um, one messaging unit is, is the lowest amount you can buy, two is twice as much as that, and four is twice as much as that. Um, I've already had a few people ask me why there's no three. Um, <laughs> we didn't, you know, we want to make it simple. We want to have pretty linear scale here. I haven't really seen a lot of need for three. Um, so this is kind of the what, what we've decided to go with. <coughs> we're, we're open to the idea of making bigger chunks or potentially maybe even smaller ones. But right now, as I mentioned, the service is the exact same uh, between premium and standard. Uh, basic is very different, so that is only queues, and it is very simple. It's much more like storage queues. Uh, it does not have a lot of the features like sessions or transactions or uh, you know other features that, that make service best what it is. Um, standard has all these things, uh, so does premium. The one key difference that premium doesn't have is that it doesn't have express entities. Uh, so if you're not familiar with them, an express entity is a is a way that we'll do it almost like a volatile message. If you've worked with Rabbit or Tibco or a few other platforms, you'll know that they all brag about how fast they can do messaging, and it's because they turn off persistence, which we don't ever do. Um, but we do have an option uh, called express entities, which is kind of turning off some persistence. What it really means is if you have an active listener, uh, we will deliver the message to the active listener on the queue or topic without persisting it in the storage. 
But if you are not having an active listener, and you're not, or you're not keeping up with the rate of delivery that we're sending, uh, we'll start persisting the messages again. Um, so it's not as, it's not really truly volatile messaging, but it can be considerably faster because we don't have to wait on the storage uh, piece to do that. Uh, and that's again, that's kind of where this unpredictable latency part can come in a shared environment. Um, we don't have that exact feature in premium because we don't really need it. Uh, we know we'll always have fast performance from our storage, so we uh, chose actually not to have that feature on. We are thinking about a different uh, options for things like volatile messaging, but um, that is the big thing that's going to be different between standard and premium is if you're using express queues, uh, you're not going to be able to use them in, in our uh, premium offering. So uh, do be aware of that. Uh, the other thing that's a little bit different is the way partitioning works. Uh, partitioned entities were really created as an availability feature in uh, our shared platform. They were very good at doing that. Um, since it's not a shared platform in premium, mm, they don't really provide the same things. They're still there. You can use them, um, but uh, non-partitioned entities work just fine in premium. Um, and so if we look a little bit Oh, yeah, hey, look, I have pictures of the portal. Uh, if you go to, I don't know, Twitter, Clemens's blog or something, you probably can get the link to, to see this. It's just a special URL you use. Um, and from within here, you can actually play around with uh, Service Bus only for premium. This is only for premium right now. Uh, the kind of cool thing here that you can see on the right is that we'll let you see your CPU and uh, memory utilization. Uh, so you can actually see how much you're filling up your your namespace. Uh, so this is a good indicator of when to, you know, scale up or scale down your messaging units uh, based on your throughput. So this is kind of a slick thing. We are going to be uh, getting all of our products into the new portal uh, going forward. I can't really say exactly when that's all going to be, um, but uh, it is happening. And uh, so you'll get so some cool features out of that. But this is, you know, my favorite part is being able to see, hey, how much am I really using and how much sort of headroom do I really have? Again, this is only for premium right now because these metrics uh, don't exist in the shared platform and they wouldn't really make any sense because by definition it is, it is a shared platform. Uh, so you're not really kind of getting anything out of that. Let's see, um, so what do we do with this, right? So uh, when we were testing this, uh, we were getting, consistently getting um, 3,000 messages a second on a topic. Um, and topics are actually more work than queues. They, they require extra stuff going on. Um, so if you use a queue, you can actually go a bit faster. Uh, the other kinds of things we were getting uh, were, were pretty... Um, <laughs> I should hide my notifications, I suppose. Uh, the other th kinds of things we were getting is uh, with four messaging units, uh, we were able to do 20,000 messages a second to a single queue. So that's some pretty significant throughput. Um, if you've, you know, worked with Service Bus at all, or most messaging, um, uh, most messaging platforms, that's going to start to be a pretty impressive number, pretty, pretty quick. Um, so I would definitely uh, encourage you to take a take a spin with this and see what you think. The big thing to remember here is that this should be constant rate. So there won't be any more long tails. There won't be any more. Uh, you know, unpredictability here that you, that you get out of our shared platform. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, so now that you have that, let's see. So what what is something to keep in mind about what you do with this and and when you should use this? Um, you know, when do you want to use the new toy, right? Uh, I wouldn't start any project with premium messaging unless you really need it. Uh, so premium messaging is really about uh, about throughput and low latency. So if you don't need those things, don't worry about them. If, if you are not latency sensitive, and a lot of our customers aren't, if you're doing something like a workflow with eventual consistency, you can probably wait a couple milliseconds or a second or something and, and not need premium. Uh, we did not really design premium to be a replacement for standard. Uh, we designed it to be an augmentation to standard. We're really targeting a fairly small uh, cross-section of our customers. We have quite a few customers on our platform. We, we don't think it'll be a lot of them that, that really need to switch to premium. 
Um, and that switch to premium, you know, it's a little bit of work. There is no upgrade. So the easiest thing to do to get there, if you're really interested in playing with this, is probably to use uh, Service Bus Explorer and script out your entire namespace if you've done, you know, kind of best best practices or better practices. Your software or your, your system probably creates its own stuff in the namespace at runtime, and all you have is a few connection strings you need to manage. Um, so if you've got that, that's pretty good. Uh, I, would, I would go with that. Um, and you know, give it a try. One key thing to keep in mind is this is daily rate service, so it really does you no good to turn it on for five minutes and use it and turn it off. You're going to pay for the day, so uh, have some fun with it. If you need it for an hour, you know, go and hit it with some more load and figure out if it's working for you. Um, and you know, do a little bit more prep because one of the things that we get from our shared platform at its really low cost is you can take a lot of time to play around. And you can kind of just go home and be like, okay, well, I'll send another message next week when I get time. Um, and I would encourage you to, you know, do your development, do your iteration, do your practice stuff on our shared platform. That's that's really what it's for. That is standard for a reason. Um, and then your exact same code will work on our premium uh, platform. And that's kind of the way we want people to use this going forward is, is that premium would be like your your production environment or your your UAT environment. It's where you're going to make sure that it's all going to work the way you expect, uh, but it's not really where you're going to develop stuff. Um, it's not really targeted to that. Um, and we think the standard offering does a very good job of targeting you know, more towards the developer side or things like that. Um, if you're using server, for instance, uh, it should be pretty easy to use premium. Um, server you know, has been around for a while now. It's a very reliable product. It does very good throughput. It's pretty common to be able to get 20,000 messages a second on server on-prem. Um, but you know, not everyone wants to run a server. Not everyone wants five uh, machines that you need to run here. It's something important to keep in mind. Uh, the availability uh, requirements behind server uh, necessitate that you do have either three or five machines uh, in order to be highly available. Um, you know, we do the same thing in the cloud. We have a bunch of machines. It's, it's more than that number. Um, and uh, even if you're going to look at other messaging platforms, like you might look at this and be like, hey, that's, you know, that's a, a sort of expensive thing. If you're going to try to run a messaging platform on your own in the cloud, for instance, using IaaS, you really do need, even if it's Rabbit or something, you still need three machines to run it. Um, and those machines are going to need some pretty good disk. They're going to need certain amounts of memory. Um, and at the end of the day, even after all of that, you're still going to need an operator or an administrator to run all of that. So you need to patch those machines. You need to do maintenance on them. You need to make sure that they're healthy. Um, and you need to do things like back them up and have a, a failover plan for them. Uh, these are all sort of the things that are included in our service. So you've never had to worry about those with Service Bus at all. But you've also never gotten really good uh, sort of predictability out of it, which is exactly what premium messaging is. Premium messaging is really designed to augment or, or expand, you know, the, the cloud experience to be more like the on-prem experience. Um, I think a perfect example there is BizTalk. You run BizTalk, you get it installed, it's up and running, and it'll pretty much always react the same way, you know, to your constant workflow uh, rate. So if you're monitoring it, you know what's going on, uh, you'll see what you're capable of getting. Uh, and you should benchmark your your BizTalk solutions, just like you should benchmark your premium service bus solutions. Um, and on that kind of note, I do want to just remind people, if you're benchmarking standard service bus, it's going to be a real, uh, chaotic's not the right word, but a real unpredictable graph about what you're going to get out of that performance, because it's not a you know environment that lends itself to repeatability. Let's see. I'm Rest of this presentation. Ah, there we go. All right. Um, so no more long tails. Put in a picture. Seamus here because he's my best friend. Um, that's the only place you'll see long tails with premium. Is is not in the product. It's uh, maybe at home. Um, so when you're looking back on this, like when do you use Service Bus, right? For for premium messaging, when do you use this? It's really when you're getting a lot of server busy errors or when you're super latency sensitive. So this is going to be something, this is an option we didn't have in the past. Is 
when you run into these problems, you, you file a support ticket and there's really not that much in standard we can do for you. Um, this is the way out. Uh, other big parties in Microsoft, like Visual Studio and SharePoint, they've had private capacity on Service Bus for a while. It's not really an option we've offered to, to outside parties or customers. Um, this is the, the stopgap for that. Private capacity, the way we did it in the past, is very expensive, very, very big capacity. Um, so, you know, names like SharePoint and, and VSO, those are kind of giving you the scope of, of how big that capacity was. Um, most people don't need that. So, again, Service Bus is really for when you, you are, premium messaging is really for when you are kind of at the, the high end of scale. Anytime that you're not there, don't use it. Like, you know, it's, the standard's a great product. It's a very, very affordable product. It has got more features than any other messaging product out there. I would totally encourage you to use it. Um, if there are any questions, I think there's a chat window over here I can see. Um, I'd like to take some right now if there are any questions about uh, premium. Is uh, I have one actually, I don't know if people can chat into this. Has anyone actually used uh, on this call, used a premium namespace yet? I'm kind of interested in knowing that. Or what's your experience been if you have? I've used it. Um, uh, Service Bus Explorer has uh, a cool tool in it which is like a load test tool. We're actually, I don't know if we push the the update in yet, but we're actually making a patch for that and an upgrade for that, which will use multiple messaging factories. So you can do the same tests that we do, which is like the 20,000 messages per second thing. Um, it's cool. It's cool to see it work. Um, if you're going to do that test, do it from a region that's close to you or run it on a VM in the same region as your namespace. Right now, we're only in three regions for the preview. I think it's US West, North Europe, and Hong Kong. So that is, should cover most of everyone to get something kind of close. And so uh, do... I don't know whether you're able to see uh, the questions tab. Uh, there are a few questions. Maybe I can read out for you. Are you able to see the questions uh, tab? I am not, actually. Okay, let me... Oh, one second. Let me make you an uh, organizer. The questions from uh, Kent, few questions, and then uh, Daniel Toomey, 